everybody, it's Miss Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library at our downtown location and today we are going to talk about weaving! Yay! So, as you know, if you've been watching our videos, this summer we've been talking a lot about art that you can do with recyclable stuff we have around the house and we also all know that one of the hardest things to recycle and also to reuse are plastic grocery bags because they tear and they rip and they're not very pretty so we thought, thought up a cool project that you can use with those bags and that is to weave with them to make cool little wool hanging things. And we got the idea from communities in places like <clears throat> Central America or even Africa where they find uh, the plastic bags along their roadsides and they decided to make something of them to sell to tourists. Uh, in this book, the main character, <coughs> excuse me, um, starts weaving to make uh, table settings and bags and things to sell at the market so that she can help pay for her own school books. So that's pretty cool. So today we are going to make some plastic bag weavings out of the programming bags that we've been using this summer. So wh what you're going to need for this project is you're going to need a piece of of cardboard, not really super thick cardboard, not like box cardboard, but like cereal box cardboard, pasta box cardboard, cardboard you can cut with scissors cardboard. Then some tape, the scissors, like I said, and a stick if you want to turn it into something you can hang on your wall. So the first thing that you need if you're going to weave something is you need a loom, which is the device that you weave on. And that's what you need the cardboard for. I've already used this one once before. So how do you turn a box into a loom? Well, you take the long side like this, so that's straight up and down, and then you fold the edges over a couple of times like that. And then you tape it down. Tape it down in the middle, like so, but also on the edges to really hold it in place. Like that. And you take a little bit more tape and you do it on the other side, like that. So we folded down the edges of the cardboard on both sides and then we taped it and sometimes you need to use extra tape because the cardboard is stubborn. There we go. The box is used to being a box. It's not used to being a loom. And the reason why you do this is to give yourself a little bit of space here. So when you're going in and out with your plastic bag, uh, you have some space. Then you take your scissors and you're gonna cut your notches at the top of the bottom of your box. And you want them to try to line up as best you can. You can try doing that with a ruler. You could try just using it with doing it with your eyes. That's what I did. As you can see, I messed up a little bit here. My first cut, I didn't like it, so I just did another one right next to it. It doesn't have to be exact. It can just be as close as you can get it. And then you start stringing up your loom. So, but what with? That's where the plastic bags come in. So I had this red programming bag. This, it was from July. I cut the bottom off of the bag and then I took my scissors and I cut a couple of strips off of it. Just about one inch strips. Again, they don't have to be exact. They don't have to be precise. You do want good scissors for this project though. You might want some help from your grown up cutting the cardboard box too. And then once you have your loop of bag, cut that loop in half and then you have a long strip. And then depending on how long your loom is, you might even then be able to cut your strip in half again for this part just stringing up your loom and then you're going to 
put your strips in the notches that you've cut in the top and in the bottom just like that and you want it to be snug but not like super tight you don't want it to be bending your cardboard and then whoops, once you have them about where you want it you're going to take your tape and you're going to tape the edges down on the back side so that they don't move while you're weaving. Just make sure that it's snug like you want it and then tape it down. And then you're going to repeat that process all the way down. Okay, so once you have your loom all strung up and all nicely taped on the back, you're ready to start actually weaving. So I cut up two other program bags. I've got a yellow one and a green one. And I kept these strips nice and long. Nice and long. And how you start your weaving is pretty simple. Take it, whoop, and you're gonna tie it to the end of your first string, just like that. You can trim it down later if you want. You don't have to tie it really hard, just so that it's snug. And then you're gonna go over, under, over, under, and then just repeat from there. Smoosh it down a little. And when you get to the end, you're gonna wrap it around. You don't wanna pull too hard on the, on the end because you don't wanna push the end in. So leave it kind of loose on the end there. And then you're gonna go over, under, over, under the other way. So you'll see it went under in the first row and now it's going over in the next row up. And that's the pattern that you're just going to keep repeating. And then you mush it down again. Mush, mush, mush. And then you pick up your next thread. I'm gonna alternate colors. I ran out of my yellow, so now I'm gonna start with my green. And I'm going to have them overlap a little bit there we go. You can tie off the ends of each new color if you want to. That's what I did with this bag. But by the time it's done, it's usually pretty tight and smooshed together and it's usually pretty snug. So it's not really all that necessary. And then you just repeat again. You go wrap it around, not too tight. And you go over, under, over, under. All right, so as you can see, I am almost done with my project here. Well, with weaving it anyway. I'm going to weave on one more strip. Since these bags are slippery, what I've been doing is I have been taping the two ends of the bags together. That way they can still sort of slide up and down on my loom, but they don't they, they stay connected to each other. And since these bags are extra slidey, to make give myself a little bit more workspace on my loom, I've been scrunching down and then putting my tape dispenser on top like that, just to give myself a little extra room to work. So we're gonna weave on this one last strip. It should give me a couple of rows. Part of art is problem solving. This is just a solution that worked for me. It doesn't mean that it's the only right answer. The pattern that I wanted on here was one where all of my rows were very close together and you only see a little bit of red peeking out. If you want to do it so that you can see your, your up and down strings, 
I always get warp and woof confused. I even have a loom at home and I get those two words confused. If you want to see more of those strings peeking through, you don't have to do as tight a design as I am doing. There is no wrong way to do art. And there we go. That gave me two more rows. And then to finish off, just like I tied a little knot here, I'm gonna tie a little knot up in this top corner. I kind of like how they're opposite each other. Oop. And that they're different colors. Got the yellow one going that way. And I've got the green one going that way. That's kind of nice how that worked out. All right, so now how do I get it off of my cardboard? So that is a good question. We are gonna take them off one side at a time. And how we are going to do it is, we're gonna remove the tape from across the top. And each pair of two ends, we're gonna knot together. That helps keep everything from sliding off. knotting it just like that. And this is how we're doing it along the one side. We're going to do something different on the other side. So we'll peel those two up, peel off the tape. And again, if you need a little bit of help from your grown up to do the tying part for this part, there is nothing wrong with that. These bags are slidey. There you go. And then here's the last one. those two. Oop. And oop. now if you want to leave those dangling because that's going to be the bottom of your weaving. If you want to leave them dangling like that you can or if you want to tuck them underneath and tape them to the back you can. That's what I did with this one. You can't see them hanging in the back because I taped them in the back. They weren't, on this one, they're kind of all nice and neat and sort of the same length and I like the color. So I think I'm gonna leave them just like that. But for this one, it mostly just looked messy. So I taped it up behind. Again, it, it's your project, do it how you want. Now for the top, what's gonna be the top of our weaving, I have a stick. I am going to untape the strings from the top here, and I'm going to tie it to my stick. And it'll take a little minute here. didn't leave myself a ton to work with. You might need to squish your weaving down just a little bit more so that you have enough bag to make your knots with. See, just like that and do it all the way across. All right, once you have your stick tied onto your weaving, you can then braid some more strips together if you want to make something that you can hang it from or you can just tie 
another loop on to the end, however you like, and tape it up. If knotting is too complicated, as it did for me, I will confess, you can also tape your top down and around your stick. That might be easier. I tied this one. Whoops. I taped this one. If that happens, it's fine. You just push it back on. There we go. It's a pretty durable project, happily. There you go. All right, so, but there you go. That is your plastic bag weaving project. And we would, or at least this is mine, and we would love to see yours. So please either share them on our Facebook page or you can email them to us. Our email address was in the art bag that we sent out to you or all of our programming bags have our email address in them. So please send us Send us the pictures of your end result and we'll share them in a slideshow at the end of the summer. So thanks for tuning in guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.